a couple of Williams System 3 through 7 driver boards here. And you can see how roasty toasty the lamp uh, matrix area is with these big current limiting 27 ohm resistors. So I've taken them off of this board. And I'm going to take this thing out and wash it down, but I'm going to implement the FET mod on both of these boards just to get rid of these resistors. And one of these is for a System 7 game. Uh, can't remember the name of it right now. Anyway, presumably one of these two boards came out of it, but these resistors that I've marked with a gold dot, those should all be uh, zero ohm jumpers or just jumpers. This one, you can't hardly tell what's what here. It's burnt up so bad or it's crispy. It's gonna clean up pretty good, but I'll do the same thing for this board. Here's a great example of why I always replace the headers on these three through seven boards. We have pictures in the pin wiki of this. But this video here makes it clear how fractured these solder joints are on these headers. So they gotta go. And here we are back with the flash driver board, which I've added a blanking indication to and if the led is on that means blanking is good and working like it should i have updated the mpu board by replacing all the headers all the way around same as i did on the driver board and socketing chips where necessary including the yellow roms flash came in both yellow and green roms this one had yellow roms so i left those Flash also would have had ROMs here, here, and here. You can eliminate the care and feeding of those ROMs by simply burning a 2716 and placing it here at IC14, which I've done. And I've labeled it and I've uh, installed an NVRAM and we are good to go. I've booted it and the displays are alternating between zero the last game and 550 which is the default high score to date the lamp matrix is operating normally and the only coil that's on is coil 16 which is the coin lockout coil and coil 6 is blinking that is a flasher on the play field so let's put it into test and the first test is display test We'll get that going. So you can see all those are working properly. And the next test is lamp test. And all the lamps are operating properly. Let me get this light out. And then the next test is coil test. And when I press the button, you'll hear, hear a click. That's the uh, flipper power enable relay clicking. I could hardly hear it myself, but it did click. So we're gonna go through the 16 regular solenoids. And the 16th one is a coin lockout, so it'll go out. Odd thing about flash, you may have noticed that it instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, it goes two, one, three, four, five, six. Let me fish out a ground wire here, and I can test the special solenoids uh, as they are switch driven. Sorry about that. And all I'm going to do is rake this connector like this, and we will see the six special solenoid drives come on. One, two, three, four, five five, six. So the switch inputs for those solenoids is working perfectly. And the next test is switch test. And I have my Penny Tech tester, which I constructed from a kit. I've got four of those things now. They're excellent. 
one for each system because I just hate going around and finding things. So that was all of column one, proving that all the rows work. And now we're gonna do row one. And Flash only goes to switch 48. And Williams Games only report switches for those that are used in the game. So that is working properly. And that is the end of the tests for the CPU board. So now let me reboot it and I can show you what the LEDs do under normal circumstances when you boot a system three through six MPU. So watch closely, they're gonna come on and then they're gonna go off. And that is perfect right there. So it's booted up again. I also have the soundboard for this game attached. And I've numbered all the ICs and I'm gonna put this in the pin wiki because Williams, when they released the documentation, didn't number the ICs and it's kind of a pain in the rear end. So I've got my little homemade tester device here. I'm gonna go through, it's essentially grounding the five pins that make noises. Alternatively, you can ground those five jumpers that I have black dots next to, because they're just connected to the pins. So let me ground each one in turn, and we should hear a, a noise. Explosion takes a while to... And this is my favorite right here. Super nice. Now I can also press the uh, diagnostic button over here and get it to play diagnostic tune. And it'll go on like that until you power off and then back on. Now this IC8 is responsible for the first four sound select inputs and IC9 services only the fifth one. So if you've got a board that doesn't have that fifth sound, you know the problem is probably IC9. No sounds, it could be on, on input here, could be IC8 or IC, or and IC9. It is extremely improbable that any of these resistors or jumpers would have failed. And these are pull-up resistors, so the way this works is there's five volts supplied through this jumper to these resistors, and they pull up the signals to these 4050s, which are just buffer chips. What goes in goes out also. And when you, or when the CPU needs a sound, it will ground the transistor that grounds this pin, which pulls the pin low on the 4050, and it gets passed on to the 6821 PIA. <clears throat> so that's it. I've got a completely working flash board set here and I thank you so much for sending it.